Our next guest is an American actor, film producer, and screenwriter who is ranked among Forbes' most bankable stars. An Oscar winning actor and writer. Academy Award winning writer. He has so many films under his belt that Wikipedia has to have a separate page for his filmography. I will bring this fight to your doorstep. I'm a sergeant in the Massachusetts State Police. You like apples. The most important feature on his resume, though, is being Loz's good mate. Please welcome friend of the show, Matt Damon. Woo! Mr. Matt Damon, good morning. Morning, Maddie. Good morning, you guys. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Let's not tell everyone how long it took us to work out FaceTime, guys. Technology's <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Don't say it, Jace. It's embarrassing. <laughs> don't 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 let anyone know. I mean, did you manage to work this out yourself, Matt, or did you have to get one of the girls to help? Because Jace was just saying he's at the age where he needs his kids to help him with the tech. I, I honestly, Lazi, I was one step away from calling it the Bella down here. <laughs> but but you guys sorted it, thank God. So actually, um, and, and look, we got a lot to. We've got a lot to cover, but just quickly on getting old, I was saying to Loz, because um, we've only worked together for what, three, four years now. Yeah. Um, I remember interviewing you, Matt, God, it'd be almost 15 years ago now, and I was about to have, oh, it's 10, and I was about to have my first kid, and I said, any advice? And you said, sleep now, because you will never sleep again. <laughs> yeah. And I was and, like, and was I right? Well, at the start, <laughs> I thought you were traumatic, and you are spot on, my friend. <laughs> I had to sleep in exactly 11 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. It's true, and you never sleep the same, even when you're yeah. you're out of town for a night or something. It's just, it just never, you never reprogram that. Well, it's funny you say that, Matt, because um, you're now at the other end of that, where you're not like up with babies, but you're waiting up for your kids who are now old enough to go out and party to come home. You're on the other end of the yeah. scale. Yeah, I make I make them. My mother used to do it with me. Actually, she'd make me tell her whenever I got home, I had to go wake her up. And just tell her I was home, and and I do that with with my kids because there's no way I can wait up till midnight or something. You know what I mean? It's just, <laughs> this is not going to happen. Can I um can I get you to confirm a rumor? And if it is true, I'm 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 gobsmacked. Did you let Lauren because one of your kids is 18, and you guys were in Greece together? You can drink when you're 18. Did you let Lauren <laughs> take one of your kids out clubbing? He trusted that me. Is- but that is true. That Matthew is true. Damon, what are <laughs> was, you thinking? Listen, it's 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 all baby steps towards adulthood, and uh, Lazi was a good bridge for us to uh, eventually get to you know where 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 she can kind of do these things on her own. So was it? Uh, the, sure, my daughter pulled Lazi out of the club. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, no, she actually Bella was the one that wanted to go home. But the best part of it was before when I said, "Guys, what are we wearing to the club?" Yeah. And uh, Isabella and her friends were like, "Lazi, nothing too hectic." And I had to do a full fashion parade of what I was wearing. Did to they want? Sure they didn't want you looking no, old. Yeah, they didn't want me looking old. They didn't want me looking young. <laughs> Hey, um, let's talk movies, mate. Uh, the trailer for Instigators looks incredible, and I was saying to Loz, like, just the the action, the quality, it it looks amazing. And it was a short shoot, wasn't it? I mean, relatively speaking, yeah. We we uh, Doug Lyman directed it. Um, I did the Born Identity with him about twenty years ago. He's great, and he's done all of these amazing action movies and action comedies, like Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Edge of Tomorrow, and um, you know, on and on and on. And so. He was kind of the perfect guy to do it. And we're older now. Like, we move faster than we used to yeah. and kind of went in with a really good game plan. So we had more time if we needed it. We just ultimately didn't didn't need it. And, Matt, you filmed this in Boston, which you're a proud Bostonian. What is it like, like, being home and coming full circle and doing a film like this back in your home uh, town? It's the best, especially because Casey Affleck wrote it with another Boston guy named Chuck McLean, And so it was very much the humor of kind of where we came from. And yeah. Uh, and our whole thing making this movie was we want to make the funnest movie that we can. It's, <laughs> it's fast. It's like 90 minutes long. It's like oh, you're out. I love it's that. Just, yeah. I mean, I, it, it's, uh, it's, it's hopefully really entertaining and, uh, and funny. So it's a lot of laughs. When, when, when you're filming, so I was just going to say, when you're filming in Boston, is it a bit like, because, you know, movie star around the world, but when you're at home on the streets of Boston, it's like, no one gives a shit. You're just one of our locals. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, actually, it's like, uh, yeah, to a certain extent, I think also because movies have started filming a lot more in Boston in the right. last 20 years. So, like, when we did Good Will Hunting there 25 years ago, people, they were like, what are all these trucks? Who are all these yeah. people? Like, they didn't know what to make of it. And now it's kind of like people shrug and go on. Like, I mean, 
I, I couldn't even get my mother to meet me for dinner, uh, you know, the other <laughs> night when I was in Boston. So, so yeah, I think the, the thrill is worn off for, for, for most people. Yeah, right. Um, did I see you on the baseball pitch at Fenway Park the other day? Because Paul, my fiancé, is, is very close friends with Maddie. And Paul was like, oh, my gosh, Matt's doing the pitch at the baseball. Oh, and I was like, I can't watch this. Yeah. You were throwing I'm it out. I'm too nervous for you yeah, of all Casey the things you've I done. Oh. Well, it was funny because I've played baseball my whole life. So I, I I did this 20 years ago and I didn't think twice about it. But this time around, it was everyone was winding me up so much more. And Casey and I did it together. <laughs> so by the time I actually threw the ball, I, I was thinking about the mechanics of throwing a ball, which is <laughs> no, the no. biggest thing you can do. It's like trying to aim a you know a shot in tennis or something like that to give you some reference. It's just it's just a terrible idea. So I think my throw was pretty kind of robotic, but I, I, I threw it where I wanted it to go. But I, that's just millions of reps in my life. <laughs> but the um, but man, the crowd would turn on you if you threw a shocker. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, it goes viral if you do, and they'll, and they'll boo you, and like especially being from Boston, yeah, they they they, they won't have that. You know what we should get you to do next time you're down? Because I know you've gone to a few AFL games. Imagine a celebrity match at halftime. Oh, how, do you, no. how do you reckon you go on the field? Uh, I I got to keep – every time I go, I'm usually with Chris Hemsworth's dad, and he keeps explaining the rules to me. So I don't think I'd fare too right. well. I wouldn't know. <laughs> it would be that thing where someone would give me the ball and have to point which direction I had to run and tell me who to tackle. And yeah, it took me a few I'd, years. I'd slow the game down a little bit. <laughs> Side note, Chris Hemsworth's dad's got a better rig than Chris. Craig? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Craig Craig's just turned rig. 70 as well. Mate. Yeah. Yeah, you know, his wife, uh, uh, Loans, Craig, uh, Chris's mom, told me that, uh, that that Craigo had an eight-pack till he was 55, <laughs> and he never did a sit-up in his life. <laughs> That's just those so guys, unfair. Those guys are just built different, you know? I, I mean? hate that. <laughs> Pink kids and their metabolism. Hey, um, Maddie, just back to, to movies for a sec, because, you know, you go home to Boston to do a film like this, but those places where you have special memories um, making films never go away, do they? Because we had this incredible moment when we are in Greece. We go to Greece together every year with our families and remember we walked into that restaurant last year to sit down to have dinner and you just had this overwhelm come over you so had you filmed something there had you yeah we filmed the end of the born identity there and this and we had changed this what's a really a beautiful restaurant we had changed it to a scooter uh rental place so she you know she franca patente is renting scooters out at the end of the movie and and i walk in and and we walked in and i went oh my god this is this is the place where we shot and they actually had a picture from the movie on the wall and the, and the owner came out. And I mean, I just couldn't, I, it was, I was really overwhelmed. I actually, Doug Lyman, you know, directed the instigators and, and he directed that. I sat down at that dinner, Lousy, I don't know if you remember, I, I got on my phone for a minute because yeah. I wrote him just this long letter of gratitude, you know, going like, oh my God, you're not going to believe where I am. And I took a picture and That's cool. said, you know, thank you. And, you know, cause that movie really did change my my the trajectory of my career, and it just meant so much to my life. So it was kind of amazing being there with all of us, like friends and family, and and suddenly my my kids like sitting in that space. It just seemed so incongruous and beautiful, and yeah, it, it, was, it, it was it was a really special moment. I'll never forget walking in and looking at your face, who's done so many films. But I love that. That's but not standing lost on in you. this spot that was just so special. Yeah, it was really cool. Is there um yeah. I remember I was like, Lazi, you guys should get married here. <laughs> well, yeah, well, Paul and oh, I were no, like, I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not paying for a destination wedding. <laughs> I want something local. Matt can afford to come here. I'm not splurging but for that, international flights. That night, it was like perfectly still. It was the most amazing sunset. We had this long table. We had dinner and Paul and I had just got engaged. Like, what? Was it the night before we got engaged? I think we all had horrible yeah, hangovers yeah. that night. And we were like, yeah, let's get married here. And we went back this year and you... <laughs> Could, like the waves, you couldn't even be outside. It, it was like crashing waves all over it. And we were all crammed in this tiny little room and we were like, I don't know if this is it. I was like, I, I didn't know they had surf in Mykonos. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew, if I miss out on running up a bar tab at her wedding because you convince her to get married overseas, <laughs> then you and I are going to have words, my friend. All right, mate. I will keep my mouth shut from here on. I'm going to leave the plane. <laughs> right. Look, if Paul had it his way, parties. if Paul had it his way, we'd be getting married at Flemington Racecourse on Derby Day. So, Oh, yeah, that would oh, be convenient. Sure. How'd you go last year? You were out on Derby Day. How'd, did you get up? Uh, we we lost, I think, every single bet we placed. <laughs> we lost it. I think we nobody put nobody put more time in for less return than, than I on on race day. But we had a great great time. I mean that was that was an unbelievable day and and uh, so many nice people and we had a lot of laughs. 
We, we, we have very little money and a lot of laughs. We do basically. it well in Melbourne. The races, oh, yeah. they do it well. We showed him all the good spots. We took him to Flemington Racecourse, and then the next day we went to our local Chinese restaurant. Oh, with the lazy family season. Family Chinese. <laughs> yeah, the lazy yeah. season. <laughs> you know, Jace, I don't know if they, if Lazzy told you, we have a lazy Susan at our apartment in New York basically because of Polly and Laws. <laughs> you had they, stored they, one at, on your dining room table? Yes, we did. We installed, we got this big circular table and we installed the Lazy Susan after spending enough time with those two. We were in New York when it arrived and we'd got, we'd all gone out and I think maybe you'd forgotten it was arriving that day and we went to bed and Matt comes running down into our room and he like knocks on the door. He's like, Polly, Polly, I got to show you something. And I was like, oh my God, something momentous has happened. So we all run upstairs and Matt's like, we got a Lazy Susan. Have you- I've never seen the big man so happy either. He lost his mind. Have you seen those videos, and, and you should try it, where they're setting up the Lazy Susan at the Chinese restaurants and they spin it and they chuck the tablecloth underneath and they put all the, the <laughs> yeah. cutlery on there? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have seen that. I want to see you don't try that. My, don't give my kids any ideas, yeah. kids, man. <laughs> Stuff flying all over the kitchen. Hey, um, just quickly back on Bourne. As a uh, Bourne huge fan, any chance of doing any more in the future? Yeah, I mean, there's a there's this great German director. He directed that movie All All's Quiet on the Re- Western All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, uh, Edward Berger, and and he thinks he has an idea. And from what I understand, a script is imminent. So uh, so hopefully I'll see something in the next month or two. And and you know maybe maybe there's a good idea. I'm always open to it. I mean, you know, I love those movies. Yeah. I I love making them. And and. But it's just I don't want to I don't want to do it if I don't think it can be great. Um, but that guy is a legitimately great director, and so if he's got uh, a way he thinks a way in, then then I'm I'm very very interested because it is one of the few Amazing. franchises where the movies have just gotten better, better, and, better, and, better, and, better. and better and better. That and Police Academy. <laughs> 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 Well, I mean, Police Academy number one, obviously, <laughs> yeah. is uh, the yeah. greatest franchise of all time. Uh, um. Do you know what concerns me about your relationship with Lauren is Lauren is terrible at watching movies. We were quizzing her yesterday. Oh, yeah, I'm the worst. The only movie she's really seen is Christmas movies. I know, <laughs> I think you guilted her into watching Goodwill Hunting. Well, no, you didn't guilt me into it. I said, if I watch one of your movies, which one should it be? Oh, that's lovely of you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, how about the one I wrote when I was a kid? <laughs> you know, watch that one. The seminal moment in my life. Maybe, maybe, maybe spend a couple hours. <laughs> One night we sat with his kids and we went through every movie he's ever done and they ranked them. They gave them oh. scores out of 10. It was like our very own Rotten Tomatoes happening around kids, the oh, table. Oh, it's so savage. Savage. Kids They're are, so savage. Kids are too honest, mate. Kids are too yeah, honest. Yeah, oh, my God. No, and they hadn't They hadn't seen a lot of them, thankfully, but, uh, <laughs> but they were... They were pretty tough. Lazi, I was thinking, you know, this one opens on August 9th on Apple TV+. Plus. Um, we're going to be down in Aus- Australia, so and we'll be in Byron. I think you should – we'll have an Australian premiere at, like, Chris's house. We can have a red carpet. We'll just put a towel down because you'll be the only reporter on the Perfect. red carpet. I'm should, there. Should and, we bring the show? We can do it. We can live stream the uh, the event. Uh, Perfect. When it opens, I'll be in my ball gown at Chris's house on the red towel. <laughs> do we need to ask Chris? We don't need to ask him. Do we? We'll just, we'll just no. Do it. He'll turn that up. That house is so big, he won't even know we're there. <laughs> you know where the spare key is. He'll be Let's fine. Let's do it. He'll let you in. Um, hey, uh, <laughs> it does drop. Apple TV. Uh, you can check it out Friday, 9th of August. Just quickly before we let you go, Matt, I want to put Lauren on the spot. Oh I've, God! I got three quick movie grabs from movies you've done. I want to see if she can finish the next line. Oh. And it'll be interesting I don't to know see. If I can finish well, yeah. the next That's line. what I was about to say. All right. You can buzz in first if you know the answer. First one <laughs> up is from Bourne. Take a listen. I swear to God, if I even feel somebody behind me, there is no measure to how fast and how hard I will bring this fight to your doorstep. What does he say next, Lauren? He says, So let's go and fight. <laughs> that's like, what he's thinking. <laughs> what that's does what he say? Thinking. I think the next line is, I'm on my own side now. I think that's I'm on my own line. side now. Oh, yes. yes. Well, if you yes. didn't get that, that would have been more embarrassing for I you I said it me. so many hundreds of times in a row that it's locked in there somewhere. <laughs> All right, let's see how you go on this one. This is one of my favorites, uh, The Departed. I'm a sergeant in the Massachusetts State Police. Who the f*** are you? I erased you. You erased me, huh? I haven't seen it. Shocked. Um, you haven't seen The Departed, Lazy? It is a great don't, movie. Is, don't do this. This is not fair. <laughs> All um, right, we'll put that. We'll put that one on your we'll list. We'll put it on the list um, at the viewing party. I can't even remember what I say uh, next. We, Leo, and I rewrote that scene a number of times with uh, uh, 
um, with our writer Bill, um, we went over and over it, and I can't remember what ended up in the movie. Do you do you ever like when you're filming it on set? You know how like sometimes with sitcoms and comedies, do you ever redo the line on set if it feels like it hasn't landed? Yeah, you can because a lot of times you'll feel something in the moment. That's why, like a writer like Bill Monahan who wrote The Depart, he's one of the best writers in the world. So we did rehearsals where we would get the scene up on its feet and kind of work on it because oftentimes when you're acting, uh, you you just feel compelled to say something or, yeah. or mm. you, you feel like you don't feel like it's a place where you would say something. And in my experience as a writer, at least it's always good to listen to the actor who's living, living it out because they usually know. And so, um, so scenes like that, that's a really kind of fraught scene on the rooftop. And, you know, we got guns in each other's faces so, and it's, mm. See, that, that's good. That's, oh, that's why I was confused because there were many different lines oh. that came out after that. <laughs> oh, one. she's seen you could just feel it, Ozzy. You could just feel it. Yeah, I could. Um, I could feel it. I'll give you a bit of the line, Lauren. He says, "Shoot a cop, Einstein. Watch. This. Watch what happens. No. Watch what happens. There we <laughs> go. Ahead, shoot a cop, Einstein. Watch what happens. Final one. And my God, you should get this because you've seen <laughs> the movie. Don't do it. <laughs> Goodwill Are you hunting. sweating, Lauren? I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm like dying of cringe. This All right. is awful. Here we go. Goodwill hunting. Take a listen. Uh, Do you like apples? Yeah. How do you like these apples? Well, I got a number. That's- how do you like them, Matt? Yeah! Yeah! I was so close. I was very so close. close. Very, very close. <laughs> and from now on, by the way, I'm going to say, how do you like these oh, apples? I, I had and some idea, different. though. I was close. I was close. Hey, Matt, yeah. thank you so much for jumping on. Thanks for joining us at our new home here at Nova. Where, uh, we can't uh, guys, wait to have you in the studio. By the way, studio. I'm so happy about your new home. I'm happy you guys are crushing the ratings. You deserve it. You guys are awesome. And more to come, and I love you guys. Thank you, Matt. Love we you, appreciate Maddie. it. So does our bank manager. We can pay our mortgage. No one's more happy than that. <laughs> <laughs> they love that. They love that. It really put a handbrake on my holidays. Oh, I, I was looking you. forward to traveling the world, following you around to all your red carpets, but now hey, I'm back at work. <laughs> mate, congratulations on the instigators. It drops Apple TV Plus Friday, 9th of August. It looks like an absolute ripper. Casey Affleck's done great work with the script, and um, we'll see you when you get to Oz, mate. Awesome, guys. Keep up the great work. Love you, Maddie. Say hi to the girls. You bet. Columbia Jason Lawrence. Jason Lawrence. Wake up feeling good. On Nova 100. Jason Lauren. Follow them on socials.